Kamusta mga kabibo? Nandito na naman tayo sa isang episode ng The Bebo Project. Sa episode na ito ay pag-uusapan natin ang isa sa mga importanteng issues na tiyak na makakatulong sa atin sa kahit anumang industry na kinabibilangan natin. At ito ay walang iba kundi ang pagsulat o paggawa ng action research. Ang action research ay isang bagay na ginagamit natin para makahanap tayo o makagawa tayo ng solusyon sa mga issue o mga problema sa ating mga industriya. Pwede nito ay ginagamit sa business, sa medical field, at syempre sa education system. O doon sa mga issues at concern na nakikita natin sa mga paaralan at sa paggawa ng mga polisiya pagdating sa education na ikabubuti ng ating mga mag-aaral at pati na rin ng ating mga guro at mga taong involved sa education system sa Pilipinas. So ang ating topic sa araw na ito ay uh, pinamagatang Doing Action Research, a Potential Gateway to Quality Education. So tignan natin kung ano ito at paano ito ginagawa. Ngayon, may mga pagkakataon na tinatanong ko ang mga guro o yung mga professionals. What makes action research difficult to do? Actually, hindi lang sa action research kundi mismo yung research. Bakit napakahirap nitong gawin? At ang mga sumusunod ang kanilang mga sagot o mga reaksyon. Una ay mahirap gawin yan. Hindi ko naman talaga may pagkakila. Mahirap naman talagang magsulat o gumawa ng research. Pangalawa ay, wala akong oras para dyan. Malimbawa, sabihin natin sa isang teacher o kahit sa iba naman mga professional, talaga namang napaka-tasky ng paggawa nito. Ngayon, kapag marami ng task or work, eh, madalas mahirap ng isingit. Pangatlo, mahina ako sa writing. Writing, hindi is a gift. So, hindi naman talaga natin mapupwersa ang bawat professional na magsunan. So, manit ito ay nasa solusyonan. Pangapat, ibigay mo na sa mga bata yan. Kung baga, naiisip ng iba sa atin na hindi na para sa kanila yung ganito mga klase ng assignment or task. Iba pa nilang mga sagot ay hindi ako interesado. Hindi rin naman natin masisisi sapagkat may mga bagay talaga na talagang hindi nakukuha yung ating interes. Pang-anim, wala naman akong balak magpapromote. May mga pagkakataon na yung mga teachers o yung mga, mga professional, akala nila yung paggawa ng action research equates to or is tantamount to having a promotion. At pang pito, hindi naman ako master teacher, head teacher, school administrator, or sabi na nating manager, or maybe part of the administration. Um, ito yung mga common responses na nakukuha natin. Pero kung ating titignan, bakit nga ba natin ginagawa ang action research? Gusto ko simula ng pagbabahagi nito sa pamamagitan ng pagsasabing hindi naman talaga madali. And Maraming ang nagsasabi na expert sila, pero yung expertise na yun, that is gained through experience. And as for me, I'm not saying I'm an, I'm an expert on this field, but what I can say is that I have experience in writing and publishing researches, and I have patience. You heard it right. Patience is very important in writing your research paper. One of my professors in a graduate school used to say or tell us that research is a test of your character. I quote her for that. Um, this is her reminder to us. Mga pagkakataon na kami nakakaramdam na talaga ng hirap at parang gusto na namin sumuko. At uh, ito naman talaga ay kasuko-suko. Pero sa pamamagitan ng talk na ito, ay sana ay mas ma- ma- mapadali o mabigyan ko kayo ng mga tips kung paano makakapagsulat at mapagtatagumpayan itong napakahirap na assignment or task na ito nating mga professionals. 
I always tell my students and the people around me to start with your why. Kasi pag alam mo yung why mo, alam mo kung bakit mo ginagawa, alam mo yung gusto mong mangyari, eh kahit nagaano kahit pang isang bagay, you will be able to overcome the difficulties and the obstacles if you know your why. Now, these are the usual ways of people why they conduct action research. The first one is for our studies. Say, for instance, part siya ng requirement ng graduate school. Pwede rin namang part siya ng, or it's a prerequisite before you do or make a policy. Because you can make, cannot make a policy if you if there is no demand or if there is no problem. Next is for other industries. Say, for instance, uh, kagaya ng nakikita nyo ito dito sa screen, if you wanted to make sense of something, you wanted to make a prediction, and kagaya ng sinabi din natin ganina, kung meron kang gustong solusyonan. Kasi nagbabago ang panahon eh. Ngayon, if the times are changing, uh, if there were problems that were solved in the past, well, definitely may mga bagong problem din ng mga sumusukot. So, kapag kahalimbawa, nandiyan na yung mga bagong problema, syempre yung mga dating solusyon di na So, in engineering, in law, in business, new solutions, new answers has to be created. And this can be created if there is a an evidence base solution or steps that were taken to answer those problems. Next is for promotion. Gamitin ko yung context ng education system, particularly sa public school system. Isa sa mga tinitignan kapag ka ikaw ay nagpapapromote ay yung tinatawag natin authorship. Pwedeng nakapag-author ka ng libro, pwedeng nakapag-author ka ng, ng tula or ng sabihin natin ng kanta. And ang hinahanap nila, madalas, ay yung nakapag-author ka ng action research. Naniniwala ako na lahat ng lahat tayo rito or lahat ng professionals ay gusto ng pinatawag natin promotion. Now, this could be one of the keys for us to get promoted. Finally, ah, syempre, ito yung pinatawag natin, ginagamit natin si Action Research to improve educational practice. The Philippine education system has lots of challenges. Andyan yung number one, mababa yung tinatawag natin reading ability ng mga bata at saka yung tinatawag natin numeracy skills nila. And we know that it has been proven and shown in the latest TISA results. And we understand that we have to do something about that if we wanted to prove that our educational system is really relevant at yung sinatawag natin, nasasagot pa ba talaga nito yung demand ng, ng global, global um, trends na kung saan yung mga graduates natin are, we say, work ready. No? So, simulan natin sa sabihin natin, are, are they, what, um, are they are, are the students still interested are they still motivated are still uh, hitting um the the grades or are they performing because uh, we know that grades are not really that uh much of an indicator of what the student can do uh, the thing that we have to look into is can they perform the necessary skills for them to succeed in real life and if they're not interested to learn them um, it's it's a problem on our part because that is the time that we fail as educators. So, ginagamit natin yung action research para po tayo ay makapag, makatulong sa mga mag-aaral, ma-improve yung mga existing na policies, and many more that can help contribute to the improvement of the quality of education in the Philippines. Now, um, this slide shows you 
a possible timeline of your activities if you are going to start now, January 2024. No? So, kailangan kasi may timeline tayo. Alright? So, perhaps in January 2024, you write the research problem. Yes, we start with the research problem all the time, not the title. In the research problem, we tend to identify kung ano ba yung bagay na gusto na, na, na nakakabagabag sa atin or ano ba yung issue. Masabihin na lang natin, uh, mahina or nahihirapan umintindi ng topic na to sa math yung mga bata. So, ano po pwede natin gawin? No? So, isip tayo ng solusyon. Isip tayo ng, kumbaga, in a more professional uh, term, isip tayo ng intervention. How are we going to solve that? How are we going to help our students uh, increase their academic performance in learning that particular lesson? So, you write that. Uh, actually, you can write that in one to two days or maybe less. Now, in February 2024, you write the research title and the research questions. Okay. Pamaya, I'll show you how to write the research title and uh, possible research questions. In March 2024, look for related literature and related studies and then write the rationale. Or in the thesis form or the full thesis book, yun yung parang yung background of the study natin. Na kung saan nakikita natin yung status ko, konti literature, at siyempre yung research gap. Very important yun. In March 2024, write a letter to the principal via the school research committee na dapat meron kayo sa school ninyo and then submit the proposal to the division office if there are call for papers. Usually, the division offices are announcing call for papers lalo-lalo na pag halimbawa sabihin natin there's already a cycle for the PERF or yung basic education research uh, fund or funding. And in April 2024, assuming your paper is accepted, proceed to your God to or proceed to gathering your data and from May 24 to 2024 to July 2024 you're supposed to be completing your data gathering and then finally in August 2024 you're writing the results and discussion and the conclusion and you're ready for submission Um, if you notice, until August tayo. Bakit? Kasi napakadaming activities. Eh. Totoo naman, yung mga other tasks na pinapagawa sa atin or yung pagiging advisor na lang, um, it uh, eats up lots of our time. So, kailangan talaga na we... Uh, that's why this is the number of uh, months or this is the time lag that I recommend that you do if you're going to start now. Pero well, again, you can be flexible. Eh kung kaya mo namang uh, tapusin yung writing the research problem and writing the title and the research question, and I think it's doable, kaya mo siyang gawin ng January, hindi iusog mo yung timeline mo. Pwede naman yun. No? Uh, as long as you are also, or you do have to synchronize your timeline sa timeline na ibibigay sa'yo nung pagpapasahan mo. Yun yung isa sa mga bagay na dapat mo rin i-consider. Kung nag ka, for a specific cycle or specific cycle of the publication of a paper no may it, maybe it in the in the division office or pwede sa isang research journal na gusto mong pagpublishan so you have to take note of that kasi yun yung susunod mo pero hindi mo kaya wala rin namang problema you can still uh, have your timeline pero ang sinasabi ko lang dito simulan mo because if you don't start it if you're not going to begin with it Um, yun yung nakikisang tabi na siya hanggang later on natatabunan wala na tayo nagawa ganun po so the most important thing is that you have to you have to do and you have to work on it again easier said than done but that's how it must be talagang nasa willingness mo rin bilang isang educator bilang isang writer there are things that can be sacrificed pero What? It's just going to be for this year. The next year, eh, di wag ka muna magsulat. Ang importante, you, you, you have done something to address a specific problem in the school. You have done something to prepare yourself for a possible next promotion. Something like that. Tignan muna natin, let's try to like, take a look at writing the research problem in detail. Um, research problem is not a title. It is the concern. It is the issue. It is, of course, the problem. 
Um, sample problem that we can have here is that many students in grade 8 are having difficulty in solving problems involving factors of polynomials. I'm not a... I'm, I, don't, I, I believe that I do not have, um, say, interest in math. And therefore, I do not have mathematical, that much mathematical ability or competitive mathematical ability. So, ako, pwede isa ito sa mga, isa ako sa mga, ako studyante, isa ito sa mga bagay na, na, um, sabihin na natin, concern ko. So, kung ako studyante, I need help. Paano ko ba matututunan si polynomial ng mas mabilis? Ngayon, ang problem natin dito ay, sir, sabi niyo po, Pagka halimbawa po may problema, kailangan natin maghanap ng intervention. At yung intervention na yun, na yun later on, magiging part yun ng title mo. Yes, that's true. Okay? That intervention must be seen in your research title or action research title. So, anong gagawin mo? Anong gagawin mo is you're going to uh, think of an intervention na ginagawa mo na. More so, lagyan mo ng pangalan or gawin mo ng pangalan. Sa action research, Mas maganda kung ito yung tinatawag nating mga catchy na pangalan. Or, pwede rin naman, mag-search ka sa Google. No? Um, and then, sa Google, tignan mo ano ba yung mga ginagawa ng mga math uh, mat teachers na intervention. <coughs> Excuse me. Para uh, masolve yung mga certain uh, mathematical learning challenges ng mga estudyante. Simbawa, sabihin natin, Okay? Um, so, yun. Uh, think of a solution back by evidence. No? Alright? Okay. So, look for a study na ginawa before, preferably not more than five years, o kagaya nito, March 20, no? na kung saan yung merong isang study na gumawa siya ng paraan kung paano niya matutulungan yung mga sosyante in learning a particular uh, subject or lesson that is considered to be difficult. So, dito, kung nakikita natin, teaching model of polynomial functions using learning outcomes according to the system approach for high school students. Okay? So, uh, okay, I'm looking at the, at the study and then, sabi ko, uh, so, ginamit dito, learning outcomes according to the system. So, I will read it. And then, I'm going to take a look at it uh, kung paano ito in-implement at kung paano ko ba ito gagamitin sa pagtuturo ng polynomials doon sa grade 8 sa mga sarili kong estudyante. So, yun ang gagawin ko. No? So, after that, what you're going to do is you are you can already craft your own title now. No? Okay? O, yun. Pinasa mo. You take a look at the abstract. Okay? Now, Looking at the uh, situation, yung research problem mo, at yung nakita mo possible na intervention, pwede ka nang bumuo ngayon ng title mo. No? Kung maga parang sabihin natin, uh, you're going to puzzle them together. No? Yung tinatawag natin mga components ng problema mo, sa research problem mo, at ganoon din naman, dun sa research na nakita mo. O ito, sample. The use of learning outcomes based on the system approach o LOSA model in teaching polynomials to grade 8 learners. Take note, I said earlier, na dapat meron tayong sinasabi nating catchy na term doon sa ating title, LOSA model. Okay? So, dapat, bago mo siya inilagay dyan, dapat alam mo siya kung pa, uh, how, how it works, how, how our students taught using this model. Kasi pag hindi mo alam, hindi mo alam kung paano siya i-implement. No? Ang technique dyan, pag nabasa mo, titignan mo na lang kung paano in-implement yung, yung study. No? Kung paano in-implement yung teaching technique, yung teaching strategy. Kagaya nito, Losa, tignan mo kung paano siya uh, in-implement doon. Gagayahin mo na lang yun. No? You're just going to replicate it, but this time, it may be on a different topic, on a different subject, and on a different sub, uh, participants. Kung high school yon, hindi naman masyadong na-specify doon eh. Kung um, anong grade level, senior high ba, junior high. 
Mas maganda nga po kung halimbawa sabihin natin na i-specify mo na sa title pa lang kung ano ang level ng learners mo. College ba yan? High school? Grade school? No? Uh, dito, halagay natin o nakikita natin, nilagyan na natin grade 8 learners na. Ah, sir, pwede naman po yan sa scope and delimitation. Oh, yes, pwede naman. Kaso nga lang, pagtingin ka agad ng mga reader dito, pag nag-search sila sa internet, eh, makikita na nila kaagad kung applicable pa nila ba sa, sa level ng estudyante nila yung kinukuha nilang paper. So, at some point, tinutulungan mo na rin yung mga readers mo. Okay ba yan? Now, The next is you're going to write your your title and of course your research question. You have the title now and then your research question. Now, unang binasa ko, nakita ko, ito yung kanyang mga uh, research questions. Makikita mo yun, those are the study objectives. No? At kung makikita natin dito, hmm, parang, parang pwede ko pa siyang i-modify. No? Uh, pwede pa siyang kopyahin, lalo-lalo na kung... It, it exactly reflects what you wanted to know and what you wanted to happen. Okay? Take note that the research questions are the ones that will set the direction of your study. It will even tell you kung anong klase ng uh, treatment or kung anong klase ng data ang kukunin mo and kung anong treatment na mangyayari doon sa data mo. Pag sinabi natin treatment, anong statistical tool, anong statistical analysis ang gagamitin mo. So, for my part, parang sabi natin, hindi mo, uh, hindi ganun ka-applicable. So, pwede ka mag-modify. Okay? So, ako, modify ko yung uh, research questions ko. Now, here are my possible research questions. What is the performance, number one, what is the performance of grade 8 students concerning the lessons on polynomials? Or what are their performance when I taught them the lesson of polynomials. Bakit ko kailangan kunin yung performance nila? Kasi para malaman ko kung ano yung how do they perform? What is their grade? What is their academic performance? Okay? Now, second, what is the performance of graded students concerning the lessons on polynomials after the implementation of learning outcomes based on systems approach o LOSAM model? So, syempre, nakita ko na yung si Losa, po, pwede ko pala siyang gamitin para mag-improve yung pagkatuto ng mga bata dun sa pag-aaral ng polynomial. So, pinuha ko na yung academic performance nila. Ang tawag natin doon, magpipretest tayo. Okay? Now, ituturo ko yan, and then after some time, usually yung time na yun, haabutin niya ng mga 2 months no? or 4 weeks. Okay? Significant na yun or okay na yun. After nun, I'm going to check their performance. Pagkatapos ko ba silang turuan ng polynomial sa pamamagitan ng LOSA model, mas natuto kaya sila. Mas natulungan kaya sila ng bagong strategy as compared kung tinuruan ko sila nung tinasabi nating direct instruction o yung lecture lab. Third is, what are the recommendations of the mathematics teachers and mathematics expert in the use of learning outcomes based on the system approach or LOSA model. Siyempre, after mo mag-gather ng data patungkol dun sa result ng performance nila, after yan, maganda rin, nakitating na natin yung mga recommendations ng mga ibang mga professionals na may kinalaman doon sa ating subject matter. At ito nga yung mga uh, mathematics teachers and mathematics expert. It's very important na kunin natin yung kanilang mga thoughts regarding that kasi um, number one, they already have the experience regarding the teaching and learning process in math. So, sila yung mas makakapagbigay sa iyo ng advice at po pwede pa makakapag-improve ng tinatawag natin law sa model. Okay? Now, um, other form could be, uh, say for instance, ang study mo o yung yung issue mo concern mo English teacher ka and then you wanted to know the students views about their ability to understand the written materials so your questions could go like this number one what are the students views about their ability to understand written materials in English number two what difficulties do students encounter when they read materials that are written in English third 
what are the English teachers' views about critical thinking or critical reading skills? And fourth, based on the English teacher's perspective, can critical reading skills improve the reading comprehension of grade 10 students? Um, sir, is there a hard and fast rule in writing the research questions or the research objectives? Um, the only thing that you have to, or the things that you have to remember or keep in mind when writing this is that, number one, they're going to set the direction of the study. Number two, they're going to determine the kind of data that you are going to um, you're going to have. Okay? And because of this information, talagang napaka-importante na alam mo talaga kung ano yung hinahanap mo at yung gusto mong information. At yung mga information na yun, dapat makakatulong para makapag-conclude ka base doon sa 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 problem na iyong uh, kinakaharap. No? Para matulungan mo yung mga estudyante mo or para ma-resolve ba mo kung ano man yung problema mo sa kahit ano pang industry ito. Next po. Now, it's time, after that, it's time for you to look for related literature and related studies and then write the rationale. Again, ito yung parang background of the study. Ngayon, um, again, this could be coming from print materials no, or online materials. Para mapadali po ang ating paghanap at ang ating pagsusulat, I suggest, and I have been doing this, and it is acceptable naman po, na lahat ng mga related literature and studies natin ay manggagaling na lang po sa internet. Pero hindi po lahat na available sa internet ay katanggap-tanggap, valid, o yung term na reputable. Um, we know that we can get this information or literature from Google Scholar. Yes, uh, reputable websites, yung mga connected sa government, sa mga unit, government uh, agencies, sa mga universities, no? at saka yung mga legitimate na private entities no? or private uh, excuse me, company. Now, I have shown you here, I have shown here um, on the screen yung tinatawag natin mga reputable websites. So, uh, andyan yung tinatawag natin EBSCOhost, andyan yung ERIC, and then, uh, ito na, banggit ko na po ito sa inyo before, and then andyan yung tinatawag natin uh, ASEAN Citation Index at saka na dyan yung tinatawag natin Philippine E-Journals. Sa Philippine E-Journals ka magahanap kung gusto mo ng mga paper na sinasabi natin contextual ay sa Pilipinas. Pwede rin naman sa iba pero syempre uh, mas maganda eh, kung contextualize natin yung mga uh, ginagawa natin or yung yung ating mga paper kasi pag iba na yung culture iba yung context dyan baka hindi rin siya makatulog. Baka iba yung... Di ba kasi yung, yung culture eh? No? Iba yung system sa ibang bansa. Iba rin dito sa atin sa Pilipinas. No? Next, uh, gusto ko lang po palang ipaalala. Marami po kasi gumagamit dito ngayon. Yung mga AI o yung mga AI app natin. No? Uh, yung sa mga paraphrasing tool. Pwede naman po yun na gumamit po kayo nun. Just make sure na you double check the accuracy of the of the tool whenever the material or the text that has been paraphrased already kasi pag halimbawa po hindi po siya uh, hindi po appropriate o hindi po maganda yung pagkaka-translate o yung pagkaka-paraphrase nawawala po yung meaning might as well ikaw na lang mag-paraphrase or tignan mo lang yung content tignan mo lang yung results kagaya po nito and then modify mo na lang as needed and as appropriate so be careful po Then, after that, you write a letter to the principal by the school research committee and submit a proposal to the division office if there are call-up papers, if your work will be approved. Kadalasan po kasi, pinifilter po yan or binibigyan kayo ng advice ng inyong school research committee. Um, in my case, ako po ang school research committee um, coordinator sa Marikina High School and uh, hindi pa po talaga kami nakakapagsimula. Wala pa po nakakapagpasa. Um, submissions are encouraged. Kaso nga lang, uh, they're quite busy. We're quite busy. Uh, but 
we're trying our best no to we are trying our best to encourage our teachers uh for them to be able to provide solutions through data driven techniques and processes April 2024 assuming that your paper is accepted you may now proceed to data gathering now in your data gathering you may craft or create your research um uh, instrument no ito yung tinatawag nating survey questionnaire pwede mo siyang craft kaso nga lang kung gusto mong mapabilis mo mong gagawin ito bakit kasi pagka nag craft ka ng research instrument mo kailangan mo pa yung ipavalidate no sa mga eksperto sometimes it takes time no tapos kailangan mo pa siyang ipapilot test din no para makita mo lalo lalo na pagka qualitative research yung ginagawa mo para makita mo kung talaga talaga bang yung mga questions will excuse me will result dun sa mga mga sagot na hinahanap ko talaga makakabuo ba ako ng mga team gamit yung mga tanong na ginawa ko so medyo medyo tasking kaya yung pangalawa yung sinasuggest ko para mapadali no Um, you may adapt the research instrument or the survey questionnaire from an existing study. Ano sabihin natin? Nahanap po katong po sa critical thinking skill. O ito, may mga existing na yan. Now, some of them are free. Some are paid. Okay? Some, kailangan mo talagang uh, there, there are certain academic conditions. Pero pagka libre, you may just email them. Paalam ka sa kanila. Uh, pa- paano yun sir? Paano namin pag kung minsan nakalagay yung email nila pero pagka hindi naman ang gagawin mo uh, you have to look for the place or the institution where they are affiliated so yun yung gagawin mo um, and then after that pagka nabigyan ka ng approval then you're good to go pwede ka na mag mag data gathering now pwede mo rin naman siya i-modify kasi hindi lahat ng mga questions doon applicable sa setting mo o hindi contextualize sa'yo Okay? So, kailangan mo siyang i-modify. Then, pagka nag, nagpaalam ka, sabi mo, you will adapt. And then, of course, you're going to modify it as well. Oh, ito yung sample na sample items from uh, the Watson Blazer Critical Thinking Appraisal na gusto mong gamitin. Okay? Then, of course, from May to July, medyo mahaba-haba, May, June, July 2024, That's a period of completion of the data gathering. Dami kasi po pwedeng ngayon yun eh. Pwedeng maging problema dyan eh. Uh, nagpasa ka ng letter sa principal, matagal na forward na pa DTS sa, sa division office. Um, humingi ka ng permiso dun sa pag, uh, paggamit ng research instrument tapos hindi mo siya, hindi siya naibalik agad. Parang ganun. Uh, hindi pa kompleto yung participants mo. Ang dami mong trabaho sa work. Kaya, tinagalan natin. Three months. Pero kung halimbawa sabihin natin, uh, one one day, pwede naman. Again, nasa willingness po. No, talagang ganun kasi eh. eh totoo pa rin naman po dito yung uh, it's still true. Yung tinatawag natin na pagka gusto, maraming paraan. Pagka naman ayaw, maraming balakid. Hindi naman sabihin natin maraming dahilan. Wala naman ako lahat tayo gusto natin ng gusto natin magsulat. Ganun po. And of course, once you gather all the data needed, you don't miss out anything, eh magsulat ka na ng results and discussion. And of course, the conclusion. Medyo matagal-tagal din po yan. Pero kasi, ang format nga po ng ating, kung naalala po natin, ang format po ng ating paper, specifically from our uh, previous um, uh, sharing ng Uh, last time na nag-talk po ako, ay imarad silang po. So, ito mga 9 pages lang naman po. Siguro kung halimbawa, kung results and discussion and conclusion na lang yan, mga 1 to 2 pages na lang po yan. And I think, basing from the evidence that you have, and then of course, you're going to cite a supporting uh, supporting studies na makakapagpatatag ng iyong claim doon sa study mo, siguro mga, ayan, mga 1 month. Eh, actually, mga 1. To, to be honest po, 1 week, ayan naman po ngayon. Basta tututupan. Now, uh, your paper is supposed to be submitted to, to the birth committee. 
Paano ba ganun bawa kung hindi po siya, hindi pa rin po siya talaga tinanggap o na-reject? Yan po tawag po doon, rejection. Ngayon, if your paper is going to be rejected, eh, pwede nyo naman po siyang ipasa doon sa mga tinatawag nating mga international research journals. No? Um, birth, being a birth grantee is really good. It's a, it's a, uh, a prestige. No? It's an honor. No? Na ikaw ay ma- mabigyan ng, ng grant ng birth o matanggap. Pero hindi rin naman uh, kawalan sa atin kung halimbawa doon tayo magpapasa. Okay? After all, authorship yun. Meron most of the, the, the journals or international journals are issuing uh, publication certificate na nakalagay yung pangalan mo doon. Tapos, marami din naman sa kanila ay, ang oh, maganda kasi, yung readership nun eh. No? Type mo yung pangalan mo sa internet at makikita mo kung saan yung, yung pangalan mo affiliated to the paper that you have published online. So, yun naman ang kagandahan. No? So, huwag mawawalan po ng loob. And most importantly, syempre, may authorship ka. Eh, yun ang hinahanap natin pagka tayo po ay nagpaparang, nagpapapromote. At marami pong na C-Zero doon. Okay? So, kailangan po na we use that for our uh, we, we write actual research. Number one, to help solve existing problems. And then, of course, syempre, magagamit natin po promotion. Halimbawa po ako, ilan po sa mga uh, paper po na aming na-publish, ito po noong 2020, is uh, this particular uh, paper na pinublish po namin sa journal Pendidikan MIPA. Ang base, ito po ay naka-base po ito sa Indonesia last 2020 po. In addition, ito rin po, um, another paper that we have written and published in year 2022. Ito po ay um, ang uh, kanilang ang aming mga participants po dito, respondents. Ito po ay mga college students po sa isang uh, community college sa uh, Marikina. And of course, uh, kasagsaga ng pandemic, we wanted to find out or we wanted to understand yung mga problema ng mga, ng mga teachers at yung kanilang mga nararamdaman na stress During the time of pandemic sa kanilang pagtuturo, kahit nasabihin natin ito ay work from home, na puro papers po yung, yung kanilang mga ginagawa. No? So, uh, what we do is, uh, or what we did, is we did uh, a uh, cross-sectional explanatory study. So, may mga po, may mga kasama po ako dyan ng mga researchers. And ito, uh, I'm very, very uh, interested with this one. yung tinatawag natin calisthenics no? o yung move up, live up dance activities para ma-motivate yung mga sosyante. Uh, we also wrote this one and published it in an international uh, journal publication. No? Uh, ito po ay ginawa namin kasi nakikita namin hindi masyadong motivated di ba nang pagbalik ng mga bata during the during or from, from pandemic no? and then yung limited face-to-face classes uh, parang hindi sila ganun ka-motivated. Siyempre Nandun may point na takot sila makayulubino sa tao, nasanay ng mahabang panahon, that they are in the seclusion of their homes. So, we wanted to, eto, intervention namin, yung move up, uh, move up, leave up, yan yung parang naging intervention namin para mas mapataas yung motivation ng mga student. And in the paper, we found out na, yeah, the, when, when before they, they do their lessons, nagda-dance uh, muna sila, Move up, live up, and then they they share that uh, it is something that they help them increase interest in listening to their lessons. Kasi nga, because of the bodily activities at uh, according to study, uh, we are releasing um, substances or bodily substances na nakakatulong sa atin para tayo ay maging focus at uh, maging lively in doing other activities. Lalo, lalo na yung mga sedentary na nakaupo ka lang. Okay? And ma-share ko lang po, uh, sa research fee, um, nakikita po yung mga papers po namin, kagaya nung the one that I have shown in the previous slide. And uh, right now, uh, that was achieved a few days ago, uh, January 27, 2024, I, this paper alone already have 
uh, has 600 readership. And ang research gate kasi, ang kanyang readership, malaking part nito or maraming nagbabasa nito sa Europe. Okay? So dito, uh, it means that, sabi ko nga, you're, you haven't been to Europe, but your paper, your work has been to these countries already. At madalas nga po, nagtatanong yung mga ibang mga authors, mga, mga, mga researchers, they wanted to know what was the the tool that, that you have used. Kaso nga lang, sa sobrang uh, busy ko din po, eh, nasasagot ko na po few months later, later na po siya. Okay po? And then, uh, ito po yung sample na, na interface po ng ating uh, 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 Philippine e-journal na kung saan makikita mo or naka-index dyan yung iyong sinulat or yung, yung pinablish na research paper. So, it is something na sabihin natin, um, very, very, something that we're really proud of na nafe-feature yung aming mga journal, yung mga, mga, mga sinulat namin sa maraming mga, mga platform. Uh, next, so this is uh, the other paper that I uh, have just uh, shown you. Okay? So, um, mababasa yan, right? Ang mga, ang mga tao. And then, of course, this is the other journal. This is the International Journal of uh, Multidisciplinary Applied Business and Education Research. That is where we submit our paper for publication. And before I um, end this uh, episode, I would like to share with you this particular quote. Now, it's going to be hard, but hard does not mean impossible. Sabi nga, nung, uh, the former pres U.S. President George uh, Bush, it is difficult but not impossible. At the end of the day, yung mga natuklasan mo sa pananaliksik mo sa action research, yun yung gagawin mo ng intervention niya ngayon para ikaw ay makatulong or makapagbigay solusyon doon sa mga problema. You end those problems you improve the status quo or you improve the situation. Okay? And kung makakatulong po uh, sa ating mga uh, nanonood, no? right? you may just want to contact me through my Facebook account. No? And also, you may want to visit and watch other Bebo Project videos for about research. And definitely, you will uh, see something there na makakatulong sa inyo sa pagsusulat ng actual research. And that ends our discussion on how to write actual research and some of the tips. And um, I hope you learned something. And uh, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong pananood. And see you all on the next episode of The People Project. Paalam! Thank you.